Good morning and a very warm welcome to you on this glorious Sunday morning. The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Praise Him, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's name, now and forever. And now we stand to sing the Gloria. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law 
and the prophets. In the shadow of my hurt, forgiveness feels like a decision to reward my enemy. But in the shadow of the cross, forgiveness is merely a gift from one undeserving soul to another. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. Almighty God, our Our Heavenly Father, Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, Have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, your love stands firm from generation to generation. Open our hearts to hear your word, that we may seek Christ's presence in everyone we meet. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the first reading. The first reading can be found in the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. God commands Abraham to offer Isaac. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He called to him, Abraham, and Abraham answered, Yes, here I am. Take your son, God said, your only son Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah, there on a mountain that I will show you. Offer him as a sacrifice to me. Early the next morning, Abraham cut some wood for the sacrifice, loaded his donkey, and took Isaac and two servants with him. They started out for the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham saw the place in the distance. Then he said to the servants, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there and worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham made Isaac carry the wood for the sacrifice, and he himself carried a knife and live coals for starting the fire. As they walked along together, Isaac said, Father, he answered, Yes, my son. Isaac asked, I see that you have the coals and the wood, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Abraham answered, God himself will provide one. And the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place which God had told him about, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. He tied up his son and placed him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then he picked up the knife to kill him. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. He answered, Yes, here I am. Don't hurt the boy or do anything to him, he said. Now I know that you honor and obey God because you have not kept back your only son from me. Abraham looked round and saw a ram caught in a bush by its horns. He went and got it and offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham named that place, the Lord provides. And even today, people say, on the Lord's mountain, he provides. Hear the word of the Lord. The appointed psalm for today is Psalm 13, reading from verses 1 to 6. Verse 1. How long, O Lord, will you so utterly forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I suffer anguish in my soul and be so grieved in my heart day and night? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me, O Lord, my God, and answer me. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed against him. 
lest my foes exalt at my overthrow. Yet I put my trust in your unfailing love. O oh, let my heart rejoice in your salvation. And I will make my song to the Lord, because he deals so bountifully with me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from Romans chapter 6, verses 12 to 23. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanliness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Rewards. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes God's messenger, because he is God's messenger, will share in his reward. And whoever welcomes a good man, because he is good, will share in his reward. You can be sure that whoever gives even a drink of water, cold water to the one of the least of these, my followers, because he is my follower, will certainly receive a reward. 
This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. We believe, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a lovely text for this morning. Kind of easy for us to say something like, I'm a good Christian. I'm very hospitable. I welcome strangers into my home. I give thirsty people a glass of water to drink. Right? Kind of way you might want to place yourself in this morning's text. Well, you could be excused for thinking that, and if that's what this text is about. Yes, this text has a lot to do with the H word, but it is not about the H word we often think of when we hear or read this text. Being hospitable as Christian often comes to mind when hearing this text. But the shoe is actually on the other foot. Let me explain. This week's Gospel reading set out by our lectionary seems to be very straightforward at first glance. There is a danger of dismissing it as being very straightforward and easy to understand. I mean, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. The first thing is, who is the you in the story? Then who is God's messenger? Who is the good person? Who is the least of these followers? One cannot just answer these questions on assumption that it could be just about anyone. There is a danger of reading this text as a straightforward text. If we are really to do justice to interpreting this text, then we must surely locate it in some sort of a literary unit. When we do that, uh, we, we, we kind of see the hospitality is actually on the other foot. And it's not Jesus' followers foot at all. For me, I'll go as far back as chapter 9 to locate this unit of our text. The end of chapter 9 will be the beginning of where I locate this text. In chapter 9, in the beginning of it, Jesus is about the town he's going about, he's performing miracles all by his lonesome. No one else is healing people according to Matthew. Now at the end of chapter 9, Jesus gives us this. The harvest is plenty. But the workers or the laborers are few. That's where I would like to begin with today's gospel text. You see, because the laborers or the workers are few, at the beginning of chapter 10, Jesus gives authority to his disciples to do what he was doing, to spread the good news to the lost sheep of Israel. Now that's very important. They were to stay clear of the Gentiles for now at least. It was as if, as if Jesus was saying, 
Let's get our own house in order before we begin to heal the world. Jesus didn't send them straight into Gentile territory. He sent them amongst the chosen people of Israel. The mission is explained further. And they were told to carry nothing, absolutely nothing. Now, as if that was not difficult enough, they were told that because they were following him and doing what he said, they would be persecuted and killed. Then it goes on to say, do not fear anyone. Again, we need to note who the you are. You are worth more than sparrows. So again, the, again, the question, who are the you in this story? Then he says, in spite of all that, all that persecution, all that hardship that you face, keep on confessing me before people. Do not be afraid to do what I am doing. Do not worry about how you will survive. Do not even worry when you are taken to court. Here maybe I'm assuming court could even be being judged by anyone. Remain a good person. So then, today's text, whoever welcomes you, you who are doing what I've asked you to do, that is who the you are, not just anyone, but those who are doing what Jesus commanded. I love it. That's who the you are. The hospitality is not coming from Jesus' followers. Let's get that clear. They are receiving it. Now you see why I say that the shoe is on the other foot. We'll get to that other H word just now. Jesus sends out his disciples into hostile territory and then asks them to remain humble. That's the other H word. It is amazing how the church preaches that we must be welcoming through this text. Yes, for sure, we must be welcoming. But not here, not in this text. Here we must become humble. That's the other H word. The other H word that we are called to do as those who are following Jesus is to be humble. We are, we, we are the carriers of great news of healing and salvation. And yet we are called as disciples of Jesus to not make it about us. If we're willing to take a deeper look at, this, at, 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 at these passages, we may notice a few things. One of the things that you'll notice is that we are meant to minister, firstly, from the margins, from the outskirts. We are to go out into areas that are hostile, areas that are not welcoming, that might not be welcoming, areas where we might be persecuted, areas where we might come up against hardships. I imagine this will come as a surprise to many Christians. The majority of us are not used to occupying the margins. We are used to occupying center stage. We are used to being the ones who wield institutional, cultural, and God-knowing authority and power over the people we help. That's what we do. We are used to being the privileged ones who share welcome, who share generosity, who share charity and hospitality to the others less fortunate or less privileged than us. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not bad at all. However, in Jesus' day, or at this time of this text, when Jesus was sending out the disciples, it had absolutely nothing to do with that. If we are reading and following our little unit, we see that Jesus sent out the disciples, and they were sent out to be vulnerable, to be dependent, to be hungry, to have no money, to have no food, to become humble, even though they were carrying the greatest gift that anyone could ever carry. That's amazing, isn't it? It could be so easy to elevate ourselves at that point, become choosy of who we live with and what we eat and who we eat with and who we minister to and when we minister. Easy to take this awesome power from Jesus and wield it over those who we actually called to serve. Sound familiar? Don't panic. <laughs> As you know me by now, I have more. This text is not about hospitality, or should I rather say, not about being a hospitable disciple. No, it's about that other H word, humility. 
to dependent to to be dependent on strangers for help that's important in this text that we are to depend on the strangers that we are called to serve or carry this good news to we are de to depend on them for our livelihood for our survival that's humility what does it tell us about the early proclamation of the gospel what does it tell us or mean for us today so we know who the you are in the story we kind of worked out who the good would be and who the least would be and who the messengers are they are the disciples of Christ not just anyone so my question is something like this do you do the you do the messengers do the good to the least make our ministries about humility or honor do we in this century minister from a place of vulnerability or from comfort i think that jesus when he sent out his disciples wanted them to minister from a position of humility and vulnerability not from power or status not from being complacent and definitely not from a place of comfort they took nothing with them we are challenged these days by a new hostile environment called covid-19 different from the ones the disciples faced but deadly nonetheless the church us you the good the least the messengers are called by jesus in all humility to go to the margins of society and declare hope healing and salvation to leave our comfort and security to forget about what we're leaving behind or maybe what we're holding on to to forget about gathering up in our storehouses to forget about building bigger barns to hold what we have stored about to forget about making sure that we have something to come back to when we return from the margins we are called just like the disciples it is dangerous it is deadly and it is uncertain we are sent as disciples that's the way jesus wanted it that's the way jesus called it to be and that's when jesus says when you go like that whoever welcomes you will receive their reward imagine that whoever welcomes me welcomes you welcomes me and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me when we go out as disciples as church as you as the good people as the messengers we are reminded by this text that we represent Jesus wherever we go whoever welcomes you welcomes me what kind of a jesus do people welcome when they welcome you whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me what kind of a god are people welcoming when they welcome you are you a true reflection of the one who sends you or are you the one who was sent but counts the cost before you go to see how much it will be worth to you before you embark on that journey we cannot take this lightly we cannot represent lightly and we sure cannot expect to be honored for doing what we are called to do let us pray so we remember in our prayers today those who are sick at this time we remember also those who care for the sick we remember also those who will face unemployment and job uncertainties we pray for businesses throughout our country we pray for the church worldwide and especially for our diocese we pray for the humble servants of god who are quietly going about the business of ministering to the world in whatever small way they find themselves ministering we pray lord we give you thanks We give you thanks that you are a good God, you are a faithful God, and you count us more worthy than the sparrows. We thank you, Lord, that our hair on our head is numbered. We thank you, Lord. And so, Lord, we come to you as children sent by you 
to bring healing, restitute, justice and salvation to the world around us. So at this time, we pray for all those who are sick. Sick, Lord, from being infected by COVID-19. Sick from cancer. Sick from all the diseases that you healed in your day. We pray, Lord, for those. We remember them and we remember their families. We ask you, Lord, to be kind, to be generous, to be gentle with them. Lord, we pray for those who give care for the sick. We thank you, Lord, for the strength that you give them to take care of those in need of healing at this time. We ask you, Lord, as we remember those who are sick, we also remember those facing unemployment, especially at this time. We remember those businesses that are struggling. We remember people who are feeling uncertain about their jobs and their livelihood and how they're going to sustain their families. We ask you, Lord, to move those of us in a position of privilege, those who have to become generous, stir in our hearts the desire to want to give, to want to give more than we have, that more than, we, more than, than we're giving at the moment. Help us, Lord, to remember those who are living on the fringes of society, not knowing where the next meal is coming from. And so, Lord, as we pray that, we pray for the church worldwide, that the church worldwide will take its place in societies, that the church will stand up and be counted, that the church will bring much healing, much salvation, much peace in the world around us, especially at this time. We pray especially for our diocese. Even though we're facing financial crisis of our own, we know, Lord, that you have been faithful to us in the past. So we offer our diocese to you. We offer all our clergy. We offer all our leaders lay and ordained in our diocese. We pray also at this time, a tough time for our Vicar General. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to hold him in your hands, that you would continue to give him the wisdom to lead us into a space where we become relevant, where we become frontline workers, where we become those who are providing an essential service for the people around us, no matter what the world may say. We ask you, Lord, that you would continue to bless those who are working tirelessly, Lord, those who are providing much needed relief around us at this time. We thank you, Lord, that as they are seen, you are seen. Help us, Lord, those of us who are sitting back, those of us who are sitting in our homes, those of us who are wondering how to get involved. Lord, lead us, show us where it is that you need us. Send us, Lord, so that we too may become your face for the rest of the world. We ask this. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. So we offer our continent to you, our good God. God bless Africa. Guard her children. Guide her leaders. And give her peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Shall we stand as we share the peace together? The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. So we give thanks to God for the gift of this bread and wine and we also to continue to give God thanks for your faithfulness as you continue to the well-being of the parish by contributing your tithes and offerings online. We pray together. Yours Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own do we give you. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfilment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might chatter the chains of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin and death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who on the night who was handed over to suffering and death, took bread, gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, do it in memory of me. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we bring before you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honour are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing.
the bread which we break? Is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is gracious. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries, for the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship, to grow in love and obedience according to your will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. In Jesus Christ our Lord, send us out into the world in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. And so the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Shall we be seated as we share a birthday blessing? We give thanks to God for those who have been celebrating their birthday over the week. We thank God that they've been given a reminder of the day that they were born. We also remember those celebrating during this upcoming week. We remember, especially this week, Joshua Pele, who will celebrate his birthday on the 30th of June. We pray for Josh. Lord, we give you thanks for Josh. We thank you, Lord, for, for the way he serves in our community. We thank you for his willingness. And now, Lord, we ask you to bless him. We ask you to bless him and his family as they celebrate the day that you sent him to them. Be with him and his family. Bless them and keep them for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Happy birthday, Josh, and all those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries and special occasions. May God bless you and keep you. And so we stand to sing our recessional hymn.
And so we thank you for joining us again. Hope to see you again next week, Sunday, 8.30. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Jesus.